four minutes after seven, I'll call this meeting of the Powell Planning Commission to order. First order of business is to adopt an agenda for tonight's meeting. We have one in front of us. I added the ZA report. Mika. Okay, under other business, we're adding the zoning administrator report. Are there any other changes? If not, I will hear a motion to approve this agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, you have done a head count, Madam Clerk, and you or Secretary, and you know that we don't have a enough members to approve the minutes that we put off last night. Right. Okay. So for the approval of October 17th, November 14th, November 21st, December 5th, January 2nd, January 2nd, February 6th, and I'm not for sure on this one for the 20th. We had... Because I know I wasn't here, Mike's not here, Bonnie's not here, so... Ron was here, Bonnie was here, Jim, and Shannon, Sid. Sid. So we have here tonight, we have Jim, Shannon, Sid, and Ronnie. Mm -hmm. So we don't have enough to approve okay. them either. So being that we've had all these sets, I had emailed Garrett Baxter today from VLCT asking them or asking him that we've had several minutes to approve. And I told him, I said, however, my issues and concerns is that if we can't get a quorum of the members to approve them, I didn't want people in the public to think we were hiding anything because they're not on our website. Because I don't post anything unless it's been approved. So I said, could you please provide me anything, any information to share along? So his response was, there is no requirement under the state law to approve minutes. If the planning commission cannot come around to approve a set of, min of minutes, then just post the ones you have and mark them as a draft. So then I asked them, so then I can put on my minutes at the bottom. I can do the draft at the top, and at the bottom we can go unapproved due to a lack of voting quorum. Because we've had quorums to do meetings. And he said that was fine to to do on all of these minutes. I don't even know that you have to give a reason. No, but I want to have a reason because I don't want anybody, I don't want no issues or... so. Fair enough. Now you, you I'm learning. Need, I'm learning. You don't need a motion from us to do that, do you? I prefer to just so that we have it okay. in our minutes that we I'll address hear, this. I'll hear a motion to approve the recommendation made by the state to our secretary that we can post draft minutes when there hasn't been a quorum to approve them with a notation at the bottom but the reason why they haven't been approved is because there's been a failure of a quorum and it'll be posted online in draft form. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? So those of us who are here have voted in favor of that methodology. Okay. <laughs> Okay, come on. That relieves the burden of people coming to the meetings. We will soon have three people here. <laughs> well, no. Not really. Hopefully not. But. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is Mike Batcher uh, talking about mapping for energy purposes. And has a picture of a piece of grass. I do. Mm -hmm. Oh, green. Looks good. Yeah, the green looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. By the way, you may know the message in your voicemail. You're welcome to come visit my backfield and see my grass. I have lots of that. Mm. It to be about eight feet tall. This does? Yeah. Um, how do you want to start? Do you want to, do you have a question? You, had, you started to tell well, me about something that was daunting. Well, energy, I, uh, energy planning standards for the municipal plans 
is a daunting document, but if you tell me that most of it, what it requires is already in our, in our plan, that's fine. What I did want to start off with was at the end of the last meeting, we had a discussion about how we we're going to be measuring solar sites in terms of how big they have to be to generate how much electricity. And I had hoped that you could help us with that. Yeah, I asked Jim Sullivan and he couldn't find any diagrams or pictures of different sizes. Okay. Um, so I so you don't say, you don't say eight acres equals X? About, about a megawatt. A megawatt. Mm -hmm. Now I've seen some, some articles from studies that indicated you could do that in smaller areas. But that may be because these are studies that have been done across the country, only a couple in Vermont. So obviously if you have more sun in Arizona, you could put a lot more in an acre than you can um, in Maine. So um, 10 acres, 8 acres, somewhere around there is a, seems like a reasonable number to think of a relatively large system. Okay, the reason why I was thinking of it is I, uh, I would think it would behoove us to set a maximum size limit for a commercial solar project without some kind of exception permit or something. In other words, if we're going to have a solar project come in that's going to be five acres and in a mapped area that we've approved, that would be okay, maybe even by right, but larger would have to have a conditional use permit. You can't regulate energy. At all? No. You, there's, there, no, there's one exception. Anything that connects to the grid, you cannot regulate. You can, however, adopt an ordinance, not a bylaw, an ordinance for screening, provided that it applies to all commercial uses. Yeah, you mentioned that last So Bennington, the town of Bennington has a screening ordinance, and that allows for screening of energy project, projects, but what should also apply to any other similar kind of use. So if you're going to screen a solar farm, you got to be able to screen a um, junkyard, a junkyard or a mm -hmm. um, storage, plant. storage, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, you would have to apply the same thing, which may be harder to do. Actually, it'd be probably hard to screen some solar in some cases. So you can do that. Um, and we can create an ordinance where you can adopt it, but you can't say. You can't do anything to. You, if I put a salt, want to put a solar panel in my backyard. I'm not talking about a solar panel. I'm talking about a ten acre, 10 acre. So, solar field. I'm talking probably about the whole racetrack. Yeah, but you can't regulate this. So the whole point of this is to basically create a plan that the Public Utilities Commission will, we call it, give deference to, but really basically pay attention to. I mean, they will look at your plan no matter what, but. If, the stronger it is, the more likely they are to say, well, you know, panel went through this planning process that we laid out and said, this is what they prefer, so therefore we will give them deference. And they have done that in other cases. Well, let's get your plan with the little red dots up on the screen again. Okay. So just to review back with respect to that whole long document, if you, if you look at your plan, it does have a lot of information in it. Like, for instance, I'm just throwing you some of these um, tables. The reason these are in here is because that document wants to know how much energy is used now and how much would, would be used under these different projections. It wants to see a set of actions to reduce energy use. That's why we have things like encouraging people to insulate and use um, cold region um, heat pumps. And we talked about the park and ride. And, plug in the car kind of stuff. All of those are things to encourage to meet those standards. So in case, in fact, much of their guidance I basically lift it and used, used it here. So really, a lot of that is in here. Um, a lot of that is in your plan currently, except for the siting part. So it is, the siting part is still daunting. So I'm going to show you this because I just, before I show you maps, if you recall, because not all of you, all of you are here, you can see these, these two lists here. What they did is they 
they took a map that showed the surface of the earth terrain and from that you could determine how much sun is going to fall in a given place so more sun is going to fall on a south facing slope than a north facing slope and more sun is going to fall on a um, Which more sun might fall on a flat surface than a slope surface in general, depending. They took out very steep slopes because it doesn't make sense. And, and then they said these kinds of things, vernal pools, river corridors, floodways, natural communities, all those are off limits. You cannot put any kind of energy um, generating facility that would fit in those. They're, they're, those are what are called known constraints. And we have maps of all of those except for, you know, that's why I put it, put it here, you say map eight. This, these maps are already in the plan. You don't have any wilderness areas, and as far as we know, you don't have any vernal pools. Okay. Really? Well, nobody's looked for them. I bet you have them, but they I haven't have, really looked. I have ver vernal pools on Well, we should map it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Depends yeah. on whether someone went out and looked for it. Okay. Yeah. Then all of these are areas that they call possible constraints. And I have to admit that the difference between the known constraints and the possible constraints it seems a little fuzzy to me. Because, for instance, FEMA floodways and FEMA special flood hazard areas. Mm -hmm. Floodways are a special flood hazard area. They have been mapped by FEMA using very sophisticated means. This, to say that one is known and the other one's possible doesn't really make any sense. Okay because they were both mapped the same way. They're just different zones within the flood hazard area. So, but that's, that's the way they operated. Okay. Floodways have typically been regulated by FEMA going way back in the, the, what, the flood hazard areas or what's called the flood fringe, like the 100 year floodplain, has often been more open to development. Hydric soils are acid soils? Hydric soils are soils that are hydro. <laughs> <laughs> Hydric soils. High, high water level? They are soils that are flooded such that there are conditions without any oxygen for some period of time during the growing season. Usually it's three weeks. So you could have soils that are wet in the winter time, and they might not, because a lot of things are wet in the winter time, um, they might not be hydric, but if your soils are flooded enough <coughs> that you dig a hole and you see indications of groundwater. Well, not unless the groundwater, just that there hasn't been oxygen for a while. Well, I'm thinking it was a clam flower. I'm yeah, clamming. Right. <laughs> In the mud, and it comes a clam. <laughs> and it floods at night. But hydric soils are mapped. I mean, we... They, they are mapped. They're mapped by the... Um, soils Conservation. Soils con well, now it's the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Um, the boundaries of things like hydric soils and wetlands really have to be determined by site-specific. Right on site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are <coughs> these are mostly good good estimates or good indicators but not accurate. Yeah, they're not accurate. Um, well actually a lot of these are like deer, even deer wintering areas. Um, I mean, that's why some of these like possible constraint I mean you're basically what a possible constraint is you're supposed to then go out and look to see if it's really there. Well we know where the public lands are there. So um, at any rate, part of the reason I'm showing you this, and, and you have all of this information in the plan, is that we can add, if you want, you can add these as additional constraints. You can basically say, well, we're, we don't want something on farmland soils, or we don't want anything on hydro soils. But it's okay to do that, as long as you're justifying why you're doing it. And you don't really want a whole lot of development on hydro soils either. You don't want to build a basement, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. so, so that's kind of the written part of it. So. Here's your town and the three villages and all your roads and that's also showing property boundaries. So just to have less stuff up on the map, I'm going to take the villages off. And these little dots are, here's the hydro plant and, I mean, no, this is the new solar farm. Here's the racetrack solar farm and then here's the hydro plant here. So you have basically three large scale energy sources. We I mean, have others, you have small ones in people's backyards. But these are the big ones. Okay. Um, now, 
Isn't there a solar farm up on Dean Road? Yeah, I was going to say, why is that not up there? Because I didn't know about it. You're enough green. Yeah. So if someone wants to tell me where that is and how big is it? I think it's like five acres, isn't it? Yeah. No, but how many megawatts is it? One. One? I was hoping that man that was coming the other day would tell us. He put it in. Yeah. yeah. Well, at some point I should get that green yes. lantern put it in. Yeah, I think so. At some point I, I should get the, yeah. the information on that. that That's a maxim. Yeah. Yeah. The lady who ran for treasurer owns the land, I think. Yeah. She does. You are, by the way, you should know that, so that when the regional energy plan was developed, it came up with allocations by town of what you need to, per, per, and you're pretty close to mm -hmm. hitting what you're supposed to allocate according to the regional plan. The regional plan is a guideline because the state already approved that, the PUC already approved that. So it's not like you have to put a lot in. Mm -hmm. All I think I've been saying is... But, I don't, I don't but think it's the fact that there is an allocated share that Powell is supposed to carry doesn't mean that a solar developer can't come in and put a solar farm on the rest of the racetrack. No, they can go over. Sure. If they think it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and mean, you may want that for whatever reason. Um, I, mean, I don't know what the I don't know why you mentioned the allocation. The fact that we're close to it is immaterial, it seems to me. Well, what I was getting at is you're supposed to share sites that are what you consider to be preferred sites for new solar, and one could argue, well, you don't need to do any, anything because you're near your allocation. And I guess my, in fact, Jim Sullivan has suggested that well, you're really near your allocation, you need to worry about. It. My my thinking is, you may still want to identify preferred sites so that you are somewhat protected in the future if... That's where I think. I think yeah. we should be putting together a map that public utilities folks will give some deference to and say that's where it should go. So let me show you a couple different things. I'm going to switch around to it. So remember they did that that magical map? Yeah, I got it so, right there. Mm -hmm. So the red are the sites that don't have any of those constraints. None of them, they don't have public, they don't have anything on them, okay? Not even possible constraints. And the green are good for solar, but have a potential constraint. So you can see a lot of these are in the forest area. Mm -hmm. um, some are probably in, in, in floodplains and the like. So that gives you an idea of the whole, the whole picture. Now I'm gonna take this away, okay? And this is just the areas that have no constraints. Wow. Okay. Now to give you a sense of scale, the big red dots are the ones that are bigger than five acres. Are no constraint sites bigger than bigger five than five acres. acres? Okay. Okay. The yellow ones are five to ten. The blue ones are one to five, and the little teeny triangles, if you can see them, are about an acre or less. Interesting. Mm. So there's lots of places, and then that's that's not the area, that's just the center, and I'm, the size of the circle is based on how bigger circle, more area, okay? Yeah. But in that approximate location, right? Well, <coughs> it's in the center of the blobs I just showed. Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was just to give you an idea about what, what we talk about how big an area, so the, so, so I would think about the big red dots as the, as the, th as the first line that you want to, want to think about. That's would be one thought, okay. So I'm going to take that away. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm going to throw one other thing is, here are, at least as far as I know, areas that are, have, have been in the past landfills. So mm -hmm. they are possible, like you have, you have your town site and you have the tannery. I don't know about these other two sites. Um, are those those old landfills, Ronnie? It was a tannery landfill. Tannery's off Dean Road at one time. But yeah. I don't know what That's these two the are. Suit. Well, it's all part of the Superfund site. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. Burdick, was that the guy's name? The landfill up on, up on uh, what's his name, Sean Donovan's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is Yeah, it used to be. Yeah, Sarkis is place. The tannery dumped a lot of stuff. Enough there. back, you can go back yeah. to the Dean Farm. Point. I don't know where that is. Oh, oh, it's <laughs> in North Park. Okay, it's Dean. Go across the river from the tannery. Go across the river tracks at the tannery. Is that here? Is that here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then go up and take a left. And what's this one here? What's that one? That's probably the one you're looking at. That's probably 
uh, them other two are probably the tannery, the original, where the sewer plant is. I yeah. thought it was yeah. where the lagoon And are. across the river from the sewer plant used okay. to be a dump. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess Green Lantern is talking about the tannery and the town. Whatever the town, the the town right. owns. So, so mm -hmm. those are potential sites. Yeah. How much total area would that be and how close would that get to? Well, neither one of them are neither one of them are red dots. Big. Neither one of them are red dots. Well, that's two. Well, those are probably a bunch of farm fields. But if, if, you, read, big red dots. if you read that letter he wrote, he was talking about about 150 kilowatts. He was talking about relatively small projects. Mm -hmm. And that was had to do with the net metering, which I can't really help you with because yeah. that has to do with stuff that's, I don't understand fully. Really. Whether or not sheep are making money off it. So, let's go back to the red dots. You like the red dots? Mm -hmm. Well, I I do because it, it it gives you a sense of no constraint areas and their respective sizes. Well, let me do something else that'll that'll might might get you interested. We're or interested. I'm interested. So, let's go back here. Our the blobs, and I'm going to add things. So here are sites of rare, threatened, endangered species or natural communities. And if uh, the red disappears, that means that these are covering them. And you're not going to see too much red disappear yet because this has already been taken out. Here's deer wintering areas. Okay. And here are. River quarters, flood hazard areas, riparian quarters, forest blocks, all of which are in your plan. Wetlands, all agricultural soils, hydric soils. And open space lands. I can take. I can show the you know, these separate. But once they all pop up, you're gonna see there's still a fair number of areas that are mm -hmm. still available. Still mm -hmm. available. Sure. It's like but modern art. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like modern art. Yeah. I, I don't know yeah. who does all this. They're pretty good. There's a lot of nooks and crannies in Palm. There are a lot of nooks and crannies. Yeah. So. So wiring would be a factor. Now the next thing we get to do is three-phase wiring. Well, right. now Ron last time said it's basically everywhere, right? On Route 7, 346, down through, uh, 346, all through North Town. It comes down from the Headless Horseman Motel there in Bennington down here at Fowl Center. It goes down through Cedar Hill, down off of Cedar Hill Road. There's three-phase. It goes down Burlington Road. Burlington Road. Mm -hmm. yeah. To the substation. Three phase. Yeah, so you're pretty well covered. Yeah. I mean, based on what I knew, this red line around here was the area that was within a mile of three phase. But if you add the other other areas, then it sounds like pretty much the entire town has mm -hmm. got plenty of it. So I don't think that's a major constraint. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys had started to talk about areas. Um, within a certain distance of houses. So, give me a second here. Pay to do this. Would you pay to do what? That map. You didn't do it. Yeah, I did. I'm making, up, I'm making it as we're speaking. Okay. I'll give him a bridge goes close to that. So he's. So see the red things that have turned kind of bluish? 
light blue, this color, mm -hmm. this turquoise, as opposed to the other red areas. Those are within 50 feet of a house. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I can show you the houses. Mm -hmm. So if you were to say, we don't want anything within 100 feet or 200 feet, after a while you're going to eliminate an awful lot of these. So I know you didn't want them close to houses, and we can we can add that, but you can't add it too far because pretty soon you won't have anything. Um, a lot of these are, you know, fields across the road, and there's a house for two or three across the road. It's not like these are isolated in the woods. They're mm -hmm. they are often in open areas, and mm -hmm. and people have built near those. And they're they're they tend to be in the lower and the flat areas, so they are in the areas that have have some development around. Them. Even the racetrack is within mm -hmm. that distance of some houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mobile home park. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, I think at one time Mike, Mike was saying, we don't want anything within X amount of feet of a house, and I, you can't go too far with it. Like if you want 100 yards, you're not going to see anything. That's what scuttled the 346 solar panels down there. Mm -hmm. Well, if I change this to a, let's say, a couple, a couple of houses right across the road. Yeah. yeah. So, pretty much. So let me just change this to 100 feet. <coughs> Oop, I've done something wrong. Oh, I made it one foot. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many there. So those are all the ones that are within 100 feet of house. So there's still quite a few left. So you could set some distances, or not. It's up. That's up to you. I mean, that, that would be a reasonable criteria. You just can't eliminate them all. Mm -hmm. So one option is now, depending on what level of detail you want to get into. I mean, some of these preferred these potential sites cover several property owners, and what many towns do is actually meet with the property owners and talk to them about this. So we could be talking about quite a few property owners. Unless you want to hone it down some more and say, okay, these are the property owners we could list as preferred. Um, another option we talked about in the office, which you could try now, the guidance document would like you to list preferred sites. You could, however, say, here are what we our criteria for preferred sites. And we just lay those out. And we don't want, I'm just going to make this up. We don't want anything within 100 feet of a house. Here's what ends up, and just show that map. You could do that. That would. <coughs> I, I'm thinking that would let you take you off the hook, mm -hmm. and basically then leave it up to a private developer in the PUC to work it out. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's not quite exactly what they're looking for because they are saying, you know, identify preferred sites, and like Bennington has identified like only three or four or five. A lot of towns are only identifying a few, not not hundreds and hundreds. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they're doing that. The the, the planning commission is. Identifying those sites and putting them in their town plan, which yeah. is being approved and then approved by the regional commission. That's what just happened. Uh, just mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and without consultation with the landowners or with they, the committee did themselves they contacted the landowners. We didn't. Not, we no, no, I, 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 but somebody in somebody in the town of Bennington contacted landowners in Bennington yeah. and saying your land is going to be yeah I'm, and I'm, I don't really I wasn't involved so I don't know the process but that's what, mm -hmm. what I understand okay I mean you know you're putting something in a plan that affects someone's property they it's mm -hmm. nice to let them know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. It looks like well, my we neighbor discuss has that meeting. We discussed that at one of our meetings. We have February. discussed it. We've discussed it almost every meeting. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now so we, we just we have can to come up with how to work with them. We can identify the property owners using this. In fact, we when we did the um, study on Tubbs and Ladbrook, we, we used this to identify property owners that we mailed a letter to and said we're, we would like to know if we can, our consultants were walking the stream, so they might be on someone's property. We only got two people who responded. One said, 
okay, and the other one said no. I never got a letter. Tubbs Brook runs right through my land. Well, he must have missed you. He did. <laughs> we found out where the good fishing hole was across yeah. from Mike's. We <laughs> found a 14 inch trout in one yeah. of the. Yeah, it's still there probably. Unless probably you're, the, real, the, the real Tubbs on Cooperman's property. Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, was he the guy with the numbers on the yeah, tree? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I had I went to his house to take arsenic out of there. <laughs> out of the house? Well, we do a household hazardous waste event, and he um, couldn't make it, and he had arsenic that was a a pesticide. It was he found it in the rafters. It was just like sitting there or something because he's owned the house for a long time, right? Yeah, sure. And before they owned it, it was her aunt's house. Mm -hmm. So it's been in the it family for it long. was old stuff. And I said, well, wrap it in about 15 plastic bags and I'll take it. And so that's yeah. what we did and we got rid of it. And what's been here? So I've been to his house, yeah. Sure. Just got a nice view. Yeah. Yeah. So is that area where there's a lot of red, is that, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming. Which, it, which area? The one that's where, right where your cursor just was. Oh, Not here? there, but more in the middle. Is this like Carpenter Hill Road and Skippery and on the other, I'm trying to just find your own place. Yeah, well, I was saying yeah, I think I, it's I my neighborhood. Tell you land I own. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, give me a. I mean, there are there are a lot of parcels of land ends? that have big open. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of fields. Which, that's why I was just wondering. Give me a second. You're like the cat jumping on the stove with pilot lights. Oh yeah. It's a good thing I have a wood stove. Because there's a lot of heat right here. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can do it. Identify the road. I know, I was trying to find out where we are, too. Yeah, my computer's being a little slow for some reason. Morty and uh, Osnick. <laughs> okay, let's see. That explains. What this road is. Actually, what, the parcels work? Would that help you? Yes, go over there for a minute. So, let's see. That's... Do you pants? have roads? Well, that's why I said, would parcels work instead of roads? Would you hmm. have to know who owns it? That's Gantz's property there. But I can do roads. second. Carpenter Hill right there. Okay, yeah, so. so there's your neighborhood. <laughs> it's like, I don't want my neighbors to get mad at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if he knows it, don't worry about it. <laughs> but I thought, I mean, you know, if you think about sure. Carpenter Hill, Mount Anthony, and Skippery, mm -hmm. and think of all the fields and open yeah. spaces that are there that make yeah. sense. Oh, yeah, way up in, especially up on Mount Anthony. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, all of, there's so yeah. many, there's so many yeah. hay fields and stuff. You don't have there. to get your ruler out. The houses, mm -hmm. 50 foot. But those are also like oh, some yeah. good oh, agricultural yeah. fields oh, yeah. that are still no, being that's, used. That's good country. This is West Carpenter Hill. Mm -hmm. so. so now it falls in your lap. I can come up in more, with more and more criteria where to, what to limit, what not, but. Ultimately, you guys have to make the decisions <coughs> where you want to go. You know, we have lots of information here. How do you want to move this forward? And time is fugiting on us. We have a grant that runs till June. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on the other hand, the town plan is moving more slowly on the other fronts. So. Um, what about the idea of large rooftops, too? Oh, yeah. The regional plan mentioned Pownell Elementary, mm -hmm. um, which isn't a gigantic. I think mm -hmm. I measured it just a couple hundred square feet. Mm -hmm. right. And I guess there's back molding and then, Tam. Um, Tam. Tam. Does Tam express interest in putting solar up there? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's another, what's that? It's not the wood product. Is there, isn't there something no, else? That would be the wood product. Is there still yeah. there? Yeah. Um, I don't know about the areas. 
along seven, it gets a little near the, it gets a little narrow in there, you know, mm -hmm. where the right. pit is. And, mm -hmm. um, so I'm a barn, barn would be in there. All right, Mike, um, let me see if I have this right. The I can red, zoom, I can zoom in by the way. No, no, no. The red blotches that are there have no constraints. Yes, and nor do they seem to have constraints when I added more. Yeah, and um, what is the shaded green to the lower left and, upper and, and right hand side? Is that forest? Green Mountain Forest? Or? Show me which. Well, the, the lower left. The green at the lower left and the green on the right. Well, there's two greens. There's there's the forest. There's the there's unbroken forest, but then some of that's. Um, hold on. Sorry, my um. Oh, go away. This is hard to do without a mouse. Let's get rid of some stuff. I think you said the lighter green stripes were wetlands. Yes, but they're not very big. You have, you have a lot of wetlands and I must take out some of this other stuff. You do have a lot of wetlands in, in Powell. Mm -hmm. But there were, there were, there was public, so that's public lands, those dark green areas. Mm -hmm. So you have Green Mountain National Forest and Powell owned land. And okay, so what's the tan? Oh, no. you want, you're going through the point. You give me a laser pointer yeah. or something. I don't have Are you one. talking about the tan color, is that what you're saying? Yeah. The, yes. <coughs> like in the middle. Tan, uh -huh. tan down by the racetrack. Oh, this. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, there was a lot of tan for a while. Those are agricultural soils. Okay. They're prime soils, statewide important soils. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have a lot of those too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see. So I mean, this is hard to do with paper maps because there's just too many different layers. That's what it really comes down to. So what I'm about curious this? what's in these things? I'm sorry? They had a meeting at the library to put solar panels down in Palm. People didn't want it. People spoke on it. So they said there's heavy metals in there, and there's this and that. And they didn't want it on top of their water source. Mm. What's in these things? Is that a good place to stick them on top of our aquifers? Or is that no consideration of anybody? As long as we've got solar panels, no matter if we got water or not. Well, you're, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I can see a concern. You do have them on the racetrack, which is probably above a really good aquifer. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is they, that's one of the reasons that they said they didn't want it down there. And look, that aquifer runs right down through there. Right, and it's going that direction too. See? And I was just curious about that. I mean, you got this stuff splashed all over the whole thing. And uh, of course, I, I can't believe that uh, your, the map they had of how much energy was being consumed in that book. Like they got oil from about three million or something barrels. Or whatever. They got it down to eight hundred and something that's by twenty fifty or whatever. That's right? the goal. That's the goal. That ain't never gonna happen. You realize how much how much uh, how useless electric is for heat? It's very poor. Fuel oil, and gas, you can get some BTUs. All I'm saying is, so I mean, if you cover the whole state with this stuff. And then we're totally dependent on electricity. The poles are over 40 feet long. If they get hit by a car, they break in two places instead of one. Because they're high up. They whip. And it is beautiful. You drive up seven now, you see how beautiful they are. Boy, it's unbelievable. It looks like a forest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, these questions will be asked by someone. I'm sure they will be. Oh, I, yeah, I don't doubt I'm that. concerned about the water thing. Because we don't have, that's one thing that we're really short of in this country. We're not short of energy. There's still plenty of oil, coal, natural gas. We are short of good water, good potable water. 
and it's getting worse all the time due to pollution and stuff. And mm -hmm. I was just curious. They said there's heavy metals in these things. And there are. And everything else. Whether they, whether they leach out or not, I don't know. I have no idea. They're covered with glass. and they're, you know, I, I, don't, I really don't know the answer on that. That's right. Well, all I'm doing is asking questions because these people, other people are going to ask these same questions. I'm not the only guy that's mm -hmm. interested in having a good, clean glass of water or something. I the other thing that concerned me, I mean, you got, like you said, the red dot, the red areas and stuff. Well, if it's owned by three, four property owners, all right, well, then they all got to agree. And these are only, these are preferred sites by whom? The power company? Or by the you. state? Or you. by the town? The town. You said the town has no, we have no say in power. No, I actually didn't exactly say that. I said your, close to say your <laughs> plan can indicate what you prefer and the PUC will pay attention to that. You can't, you can't say yes or no. But you can give them guidance when someone. So if Green Lantern comes in and says, "I want to build it here," you can say, "Our plan said we didn't want anything there." So and the PUC will look at that and go, "Okay, no." They don't have to. Right. They don't okay, have to. They just don't automatically say, "Okay, no," right? No, they don't. But they will read the plan and go, "The town went through a planning process." and said that's off limits for reasons that make sense therefore we're going to say green later no you can't do that we don't know how this is going to work ron because this is all new this guidance that document came out in december all right that's less than six months ago they're still finding their way now in bennington all they can tell you is in bennington had a site and they didn't want the site there and the puc said no it's not going to go there they looked at the town plan and said that Town plan says this is areas an area that's rural conservation shouldn't have that kind of density of development. So no, the developer wasn't happy with it. But we don't really know how much is how this is going to work. I don't even know how much solar stuff is being proposed. Now your other option is to basically say, okay, we're not even going to deal with this. We're just going to do whatever the regional plan says, and the PUC will look at the regional plan and make their decisions that way. They won't look at the town plan. Well, they might, but they won't look at it with as big a glass as they would if you went through this process. I'm just saying this is what you do to get their attention. It's up to you what you want to do, though. Yeah, I'm just curious of how this, you know, this stuff has has effects if people haven't really followed up enough. I mean, right now, like we're talking, you know, the way this thing here is, it seems like everybody wants solar all over the place. We're not in desperate need yet. It's like nuclear. They wanted that all over the place. But then they realized, oh no, we can't get rid of the waste. It's not so good a thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious. I, and I don't have an answer for that. Really, you know, matter of fact, I'm a, I'm a foot dragger, I guess. I'm not a, not a leader that wants to jump on. See, this is the answer to everything. And, and I'm, I don't know. I think we're, we're sort of talking the same language, but it, it's not an issue of it's really an issue of how how you get the attention of the people who make the decision. That's really what this comes down to. Now they will they they will get allow you to comment. You can comment on it, but they'll, your comment just sounds louder if you've gone through this process. That's the best understanding I can give you. They wanted all the regional commissions to do these plans, and all the regional commissions did do those, these plans to guide the municipalities in doing their plans. That's what the PUC was charged with doing. They're basically telling towns how to plan. So the more detailed, that specific that we can be, the better for, that we're going to yeah, get Yeah, I mean, if, if, for I instance, want. if you don't want solar panels on publicly owned lands, mm -hmm. which kind of makes sense to me, but because you protect them for other reasons, basically you just describe that these were lands that were protected for A, B, C, D. We don't believe they should be developed for solar. Just like they shouldn't be developed for houses and they shouldn't be developed for, um, you know, Commercial development, whatever. That's why they're public land. So you just basically make that kind of statement. So well, I think, for that reason. You know, I think you should not have solar in public lands. You should not have it on wetlands. You should not have it in floodways. You should not have it in places that have those kinds of constraints. Uh, and the easiest place to put solar is on a, a nice hay field. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we said brownfields.
No, I, I agree. I, I, we, I know. <laughs> we, we have said brown fields and used restored yeah, gravel beds, beds yep. and uh, landfills and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and that's what I would prefer. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, we, and and you could do that. We could say in the plan we have three we have three major issues. We have, we have the tannery, we have the landfill, we have the oh, elementary school, Tam. We have, Tam, we have the racetrack. Right. Of the racetrack I mean, and say those are our preferred sites. D Done. Does the planning That's commission, okay. do we agree on the racetrack? I mean, it, it already has been developed. Does that make sense to develop that more? I mean, that's a, how much land is that that's down there? There's a lot of land. A lot of land. You only, land. only used eight acres. Right. So you're talking probably over 100 left. Mm -hmm. And we don't even really know who owns the place anymore. What is it? Yeah, there's 140 acres. There's some acres. Which it ain't all fit for no. solar, but still there's 140 acres down there. Yeah. So let me, let's go to the racetrack and I'll show you a few things. Well, you can see it right now. Well, I, yeah, I just covered it with flood hazard areas. And that actually is in the floodplain, the way they put it. Yeah, it's in the floodplain. It's where so the first place to flood. Here are the panels now, right, right there. Yeah. This is all mm -hmm. potential. Allegedly good solar. Mm -hmm. um, probably there's there's certainly more up here. Um, the the red is good solar. It's real work tracks. Well, yeah. Yeah. I told him it was a model. Uh, it was a model. <laughs> I didn't do it. It wasn't mine. They should develop solar panels for train tracks. Yeah, uh, I think that'd be a great idea. Good Actually, idea. they put them over parking lots now. That makes a lot of sense. Or bike paths or so whatever, this, highways. This is, this is all a flood zone, right? Yeah. And this is the flood way. So yeah, you have plenty of land around there that's not in the flood way. That mm -hmm. would be, um, mm -hmm. I don't, to be honest with you, with you Sid, I don't know why all of this didn't show up. Like, I don't know why that doesn't show up. Or I can understand why that doesn't show up. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand why more doesn't show up. As, I mean, this was an imperfect, whoever developed these maps mm -hmm. wasn't perfect. Well, that They're is indicators. The, that's the river corridor floodway. So maybe that's well, the river corridor, let's see what the river corridor is. The river corridor is the yellow line. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's probably a good idea not to put it in there. Because someday the river's going to be over here. Mm -hmm. um, actually, some of the panels are in the river corridor. They're so, in there now, some of the panels. Right. So the preference would be to put them up in here. Mm -hmm. um, I assume they created these ponds, right? They, they are yeah, they're, they're man-made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but still, there's plenty. There's still plenty of space. I don't think. Well, there's plenty of space. I mean, you could probably double the capacity there. No question. Yeah. Well, they had the car show. Well, on. speaking for myself, I would, if we were going to designate areas, I would designate the track, roofs of large buildings. Or former landfills, restored gravel pits. <laughs> is there it's preferred sites? Is there as a preferred is sites. there room in any of the other existing solar? I, I don't know them very well, so you have to tell me what which other ones are out there and help. There's a new one that's across there's, the river. There's a new one on Dean Road mm -hmm. that Mr. doesn't Lane. show up in yours. Uh, so and there was one proposed for Cedar Hill Road, wasn't there, Ron? Yes. 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 One there was one on, uh, yeah. across from uh, Messina's. Yeah. Yeah, they wanted to go under yeah. that field. Right she there. took out the paperwork for it. Uh, so I can I can map these, but you have to tell me where it's. So Dean Road, who, who owns that property? There? That's Maxim. Now owned by M A X O N Trucking, I think. Yeah. X O N Trucking. Yeah. Okay. And that was proposed or exists. It's it. it's licensed. It's, 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 it's approved. Mm -hmm. They do have a solar field, or it's yeah, yeah, yeah. They they solar field. Field. and so it's that's an additional one to the one mm -hmm. we have. Any others? Any other potential ones that you you guys you just said Cedar Hill? Well, they they talked about it earlier when the first people that was uh, the Dodge property. Uh, yeah, said that. between Quarry Quarry yeah. uh, Road and. Uh, but you, you, you know, there's a slope there, though. I don't know. If it's, it is a level. Yeah. So it probably wasn't a great place. There's a, there is a landfill at the transfer station. Yeah. There's also a gravel bed, bed behind it. Who owns that? 
Probably the town, they probably use it. The town owns half of it. When you say restored gravel pits, are there any in particular that come to mind? Again, I don't know. Them. No, the one that has, the one that's got a big solar field on it now is the one uh, off Northwest Hill Road called Palmers. Palmers. Yeah, Palmers. It's got, got a big solar field, field on it already. Is that the relatively new one? Yeah. 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 Yes. We've got that one. Yeah, we got that one. Yeah. But, so what's the difference? Uh, uh, elementary one? school. And Shannon, Tam, so you've talked to Tam and they... That's I just know that I, Trevor said at some point that he was interested in okay. solar on their rooftop because right. they have a lot of rooftop over there. I'm going to talk to Trevor too and just say, okay, we might do a preferred site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would there well, be any don't opposition? You get some kind of way, since we're talking about, is there any opposition to putting something on the elementary school? People would be concerned about it. I mean, the line is putting out all this stuff about chemicals and stuff. You it's mean, on because a rooftop. Because, because the children are inside. I'm just asking. Could be. That would be a shock. Kids are inside. The neighbors may not like uh, that uh, Magmold either. Is that still on that strip? People. No, but that's there's no houses around that. And we're talking rooftop. I know. Right? I know. I'm just talking to that gang. Yeah. Yeah. Seems to me They seem to be anti solar that's what See? I'm Seems to me that rooftop solar is less objectionable yeah. Yeah. than ground-mounted solar. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, you're going to have to, assuming the existing town plan gets approved, you will have to have hearings on this. So you'll, you might want to reach out to those people that were listening here and say, we'd like to do this. In fact, you may want to reach out to them before you have a hearing. I guess I'd better make a list. We don't know who owns the rooftop. Not yet. I talked to uh, Jim Foreclosure last night. Yeah, when I was talking to Theory yeah. the other night, he said he's looking for a court case and doesn't see any. Doesn't see any. Is there any other town owned land that would be appropriate? How about uh, fire stations? Uh, the big Probably not. Probably not. The biggest one we got is down south town, and that's. That isn't that huge. They don't have to, the fire station, it's not very far from, which one is that? What about the roof of the Legion? I don't know how big the fire We didn't have any excess. It's pretty good size. The fire station has some land near Ladbrook. It's a big field. property there next to the post office. Is that the final post office is and the firehouse? Yeah. They own all that property there. The okay. Legion could that's, be listed. That's it's taken. Put that flat roof. Yeah. And the other real. And then the size. roof of your that's, that's uh, the village. Which fire, yeah. right? fire station yeah. is that? That's, uh, well, Pound, it isn't Pound of Valley, it's the other one. Pound of Protective. Mm -hmm. Pound of Protective. Association. Yeah, the Legion's got a lot of land there. These are small, but that's okay. There's also Oak Hill School. That's that's so there's the elementary school and then there's Oak Hill yeah. School. That's not a very big building, though, is it? They, they have some vacant, but well, they don't have much vacant land around. No, that's pretty well used up right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just I'm talking rooftop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm We don't know what's going to happen at Hot Scrabble, but yeah. No, they said it isn't going to open. No, no. I know they said there might be two or three people interested in buying. Yeah. This is the one on site. This is the one down. Where that's they the one on site. Closer to Wednesday. Is that the one with the oh, big sand? Sure. Yeah. How about this, uh, Ronnie? Kind of how about the yeah. sand kind of yeah. yeah. building we? across on Dean Road, across the road where from we? your place, where the town Did stores? Or not store the sand. Garage. Oh, the warehouse? Yeah, the warehouse. The warehouse, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's big enough, but it's a good sized building. It's a good sized mm -hmm. building. Where is mm -hmm. this warehouse? In North Pound. North Pound. 
intersection of Dean Road and 346. Right. Town where? Like the town garage, or is that the town garage? Town where? Town where? Store, store, sand, and equipment. We got some equipment in there too. But we're from town garage. We call that out here on Middle Pond. I mean, not Middle Pond. Maple Grove. Oh, okay. That's what we call it. That's what you call it. It used to be the Tangy Warehouse, but that's a big building. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's big. Is that owned by the town? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. We got that through. Is that a flat roof? Or it's that? got a little pitch to it. It's got a pitch. It's got a pitch, but it isn't steep. No. It gets good, gets good sun, I know that. Yeah. 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 It gets good sun. So you mentioned you, you started to backtrack on this Dodge property. Is that is that a potential one or is that just somebody talking they, about? They 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 well, evidently backed out. out. I don't know who backed out or what happened. But they were going to put it on. Yeah. That's off Quarry Road. Corey Hill Road. Oh, Corey Hill. Yeah. That's kind of the more hidden pasture. Yeah, on the left there. Yeah, but it's got all the way up to the house. house. It's, 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 she's going to run sheep Cedar underneath Hill. it. And, right. Yeah. yeah, I know. You know, so yeah. the, if the sun passes by it all, all day long, mm -hmm. I think it's a good site. And I don't think it's good yeah. such prime agricultural land. I no, it's, it's pasture got, land. It's got, yeah. it's got lots of cedar trees in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah some cedar trees cedar in there. Where, yeah. where is it? Yeah. Across from Burrington's more or less. Uh, oh, yeah. more of that's why I have a map up here. Oh, I know. Cedar Hill. We've well, got too Where's many things on it. I'll yeah. come around and point. Where's your Cedar Hill? All right, I'll take a walk. Okay, I'll take a walk. Just, just, just past Mac Molden. All right, hold on, wait a second. See, yeah. so it wants me to take stuff off, so I can only do one yeah. thing at a time. So that's yeah. so okay. deer wintering. Let's my stuff on Take out the river quarters. Take out the... That's what they call that, a collage? It's called layers. It's called layers. It should be a mass moker. <laughs> it looks like a <laughs> yeah. Hey, I like, I like a collage. <laughs> Stained right. glass. So, uh, that's all that we do. I still have deer wearing here. We don't want those. So that is just the town and roads and solar. So where is it? Okay, we're gonna go past Mac Mulder. Yeah. So, okay, so Mac. Isn't it right there where the star is? Yeah. Ronnie, pull it just a little bit. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Come this way. Kind of like right there. That's Cedar Hill Cedar Road. Hill. There's Quarry yeah. Hill, Cedar Hill. Yeah. yeah. This is Dark Woods Road. Mm -hmm. Where's Quarry Hill? Three Fortis right here. That's the piece you got your your thing out of. This here we're looking at. Yeah, we're in that right. Yes. That's where that field. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. That spot right there, yeah. that belongs to Dodge. Yeah. yeah, that's the field that, that they were going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She had some kind of a corporation. Yeah, I don't think it's in the name of Dodge. Yeah, it's no, Cleveland. It's no, it's to do with uh, her first name, I think. It's right. Cleveland. Cleveland Cle Dodge? Cle Cle uh, Cle Corporation, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So this one in here, right there? Yeah, Cle Cle Dodge. yeah that's it right yeah, there. Right in there. Yeah. They got a few beef cows wandering around up there now. Yeah. Yeah. But I know they looked at it before. There yeah, she actually, you know, I had intention of doing something with it. I don't know. And then it just disappeared. She put up a hell of a page wire fence around it. It's got yeah. a beautiful fence. Beautiful fence. Yeah. Beautiful fence. <laughs> <laughs> I just back down when oh, this is the, what, the sheep the fence. Yeah. This is what you're talking about. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. When it was going on with about putting it down by the water thing, I think mm -hmm. kind of. <laughs> it'll be well it would be a well protected uh, solar <laughs> yes it would oh yeah <laughs> um, I don't know what the rest of the planning commission thinks but I think we have a workable perf list of preferred sites mm -hmm. okay yeah. mm -hmm. I'll have to spend some time figuring out where they all are and then we'll come back and look at this again and can can I'll just do a paper map next time. Can you do, land, electronics, can you do landowners? 
because yeah. we uh, we we could divide them up mm -hmm. amongst us and eat, everybody call five or four or three. Yeah, definitely. Max and you need to go and see see how big that is. That's the newest one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's that one? That would be down the mm -hmm. down by the tannery property. Oh. Okay. Cross the railroad tracks and take a left. Oh yeah, you can see that from yeah. yeah. Okay. We're not going to make a motion or anything yet. We're going to you're going to pull this together for us to look at one last time and get us the names of the property owners, mm -hmm. and we'll. Well, you only need you need the public ones. You need the American Legion, Oakville School. You don't need the highway project. You know who owns that. Mac Molden. There's somebody down there all the time now. They're in Arlington, you can call them there. Well, actually, you have to, you have, you're going to have to talk to corporate. Yeah. I don't know who to talk to in corporate. So mm -hmm. Your guess will be as good as mine. Yeah. But you should have an address for them anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wherever they send the tax bill to. Find out. Okay. So we have a couple of existing we need Dear to add. Dear Cora Hill is Q-U-A-R-R-Y. Okay. Try this for a little dot match just now. Okay. Need anything else from us tonight? Unless there's anything else you can think of. No, I don't think so, but I think we do have to go through mail, Julie. Yes. Okay. So you're going to bring us maps and reimbursements. I will. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Now, um, Secretary has some mail to discuss or hand out or whatever, and she also has a zoning administrator report. Okay, mail, 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 mail. Okay. Mail, we have a VLCT weekly legislative report number 11. We just got it on March 16th, so I actually had an email that to you guys yet. Um, so, we can get that, huh? Show you if you want to pass around. And then I got an um, email from Linda today to do with the, um, their agenda for the Pellon Select Board, Pellon Elementary School Library on Thursday, March 29th, special meeting at 7 p.m. to have the select room. We'll meet and have a discussion on the proposed down plan. Public attend attendance and input are welcome. And a note because some people just think that you can call the school and get all your openings that you want. There's a process that you have to go through. It's not always available. So I guess gotta make that note also. Right, so that's that piece of mail. And then I have from State of Vermont Department <coughs> of Environmental Conservation. Bless you. That's an official notice from the, the Vermont Electrical Power Company, mm -hmm. which is Velco, is applying for one or more permits on the Agency of Natural Resources because our properties are proposed. To, so it's um, Stanford and South Stream Road that they're going to work on. The wetland. That bag is a little worse for wear. You're going to. Which one? Uh, you're going to spring yeah, out of it. <laughs> well, it's like sometimes, okay. You spare no expense. That's all my mail. That goes my resource. Oh, I 
picture. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this is bad. It's, it's nice. Oh, this is uh, this is the hour line that goes up over the mountain, right? Yeah. From South Stream Road. Yes. Yes. Up over Stanford. Up over that way. Yeah. Yes. So that's our notice packet on that. Oh, isn't that nice to have a map of it? You got none? Then you might find out who, who, uh, who did you build the racetrack for the taxes. I don't know. On my last work, yeah. there was, I don't know, seven. So, so was one. Yeah, there's like seven of them listed. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh, well, yeah, the old guys. Yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah, progress partners. The guy named Solos. Anybody else want to see this? Is the, this is an extension or improvements to a power line, and they are going to be going through wetlands buffer areas, and they identify them on the route of the power line. They're pretty far away from civilization. Yeah, that's why <laughs> that's where we're out five hours of electricity the other day. Oh, really? Because of that <clears throat> line back at uh, Bob's Pond, out that way. Oh, the it tree was on fell. fire. The tree fell. Yeah. 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 That's right. That was quite a while. Five so, hours were out. Mm -hmm. so that's my mail. Okay. Okay. I'm happy to see that get fixed. Is there uh, anything from the zoning administrator? Yes. Can you read it? Okay. Yeah. He read has that. 12, 2017, 1 to 2018, three months total. Wow. Number of applications received seven. Number accepted, seven. Number of permits granted, five verifications, two, ad two one addition, and one a barn. Number forwarded to the DRB. And in his status, there's then a permit for a barn in addition, five verifications, checked on signs and junk in yards and gravel operation, and answered phone calls related to zoning questions. Get busy three weeks, busy three months. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's his report. Is there any other business to come before the Planning Commission? I only, I have, um, I'm going to stay on probably for one more month just to get us reorganize and stuff. Isn't but. there a rule that you can't leave until you have an adequate replacement? So I I don't mind I'm gonna say you know through next month so that we can do the appointments because I think the selectmen are supposed to appoint like April fifth around that time frame for new members and stuff but I will be coming off Point after 14 years. Wow, well, good for wow. You. wow. 14 wow. years. But I mean, I, like I said, I'll have every, you know. You'll have everything ready to transition to the new yes. person. Whoever the identity is. of whom we have no idea. No idea. Yeah. You want the driveway? <coughs> well, unfortunately, I don't live in Are you going to still finish up the village designation stuff, or is that going to get handed over? She's going to hand it over to me over. tonight. Oh, no, now we're in trouble. <laughs> I have my folder okay. and now you I have know, now you know who to pictures. <laughs> but yes, so I will be coming off. I didn't write a letter or anything, but now that I'm out front, I guess. Yeah, you can't full. Yes. No, that's not a demanding job. Two hours a day? Yeah. What are you going to do to DRB? I'm coming off the DRB mm, also. Mm, mm, <laughs> double wow. I'm going to be yes. You know, wow. you know what? Yeah. I think I'll do that. I think I'll do that. You better go with it. Well, with the DRB, though, because I, I don't, I feel funny, even the past year, recording my work that is my work. You know, like when we do the permits, I have to record them and do my Lars, and it's just, 
I am not comfortable doing my mm -hmm. recording my own work. Yeah. Not that I've done anything or. Okay, well, we can consider ourselves forewarned. That doesn't mean forearmed. But be but thinking think about who you might know in town who, and you too, you know mm -hmm. more people in town than any of us. So Don't here, if there's nothing minute. else, if there's nothing else, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is second. there a second? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. oh. Hearing none. Are we doing a work session next in a couple weeks? I know we've been doing the work session in regular. Mike didn't tell me. Okay. okay. So I'll we will let you know. Okay.